Hello everybody and welcome to this week's um, track guide brought to you by David Peril. I'm back, uh, five weeks on the road and finally back at home um, and kind of looking forward to doing some more track guides in the future and also playing some other games. Got a WRC 8 uh, sort of review coming up. So I tried this uh, track combo, it's the Group 3 Daily Race C uh, combination. I tried it in a Porsche first and then in a Nissan GTR and then in a McLaren and they're all slow. So in the end the best one to choose is definitely still the Ford around this uh, very very wet track um, and you need to be using the heavy wet tires. So a couple of themes that uh, we can share here. I wasn't particularly fast compared to the top 10. I think I was about one second off the, the top 10 guys. But the main, the, the main premise uh, is there. So if I spent more time doing some laps, I'm sure I could have gotten a lot closer to the top 10, um, maybe even in 11. Um, but to be honest with you, I've been away so long and I really wanted to get this track out, out with enough useful information where you can get going without me trying to create the absolute perfect lap because my perfect lap would still come from what I'm about to tell you anyway. Um, fundamentally, uh, what you want to do is always be pointing in a straight line because uh, these cars don't like to be uh, having multiple forces or multiple uses of energy going through them at the same time. So if you're in a straight line, you can brake better and you can accelerate better. And because it's wet, the cars don't like to turn that much. So at the end of the day, you need to maximize your braking, you need to maximize your acceleration, and you need to minimize the time that you're turning. So a couple of things also, um, a couple of themes really. You'll see here I'm running wide. Uh, effectively, I cooked it on the brakes. And if you're trying this for the first time, this combination, you may find yourself constantly missing corners despite looking at the best lap ghosts and seeing that they're braking later than you and still making the corner. The reason that this is happening, I believe, is fundamentally they are not locking the rear wheels as much as you are. So how do you avoid that? Simply gear down as late as possible. If you gear down too early in the rev range, the rear wheels will spin and that creates a huge differential between the wheel speed and the road speed and creates a sliding effect, a locking effect, that, and you'll keep missing corners, you'll keep missing apexes. So. Whenever you're braking in either in any of these Group 3 cars or in the wet, you want to be uh, gearing down as late as possible. So maximize the use of the actual brakes and minimize the use of the gearbox to slow the car down. Um, that will result in less locking and in more of an ability to make the corners. Um, in terms of racing lines, you're going to be using the regular dry lines, unfortunately. Um, I do wish that Gran Turismo sort of added an effect added an effect of what would happen if you drove over white lines so if you're ever curious about how realistic Gran Turismo is simply go to this place in real life in the rain and do 250 around these corners in a group in, in, in your car and you'll find that you're probably going to land up in a wall a little bit too much grip in my opinion still in the wet conditions and there's this weird sliding effect that you have in the really slow speed corners where the, the front is simply not turning and um, you do tend to get quite a bit of understeer in real life in a GT3 um, in slow speed but there's still more fidelity in the steering feel whereas here it just tends to be quite numb and sort of muted um, not much feedback so use the dry lines um, just like you would uh, when if it was a dry uh, layout but take into consideration where you're braking and um, the speed at which you're gearing down and then you got to try and get your rotation done. I know I talk about rotation all the time, as early as possible. So here you'll see that I, do, I gear down as I turn into the corner and hit the first apex. I go to first gear, it creates a little bit of rotation. And I'm able to exit the corner quite tight and in a straight as line as possible. It's very easy to spin in that kink, by the way. So just be aware of that when you're racing. Be very patient on the power, but don't be afraid of a little bit of wheel spin because if you wait too long for the rear wheels to settle, you're just not going to accelerate anyway. So you want to be mindful of that and uh, yeah, maximize your acceleration by pointing in a straight line as possible and then don't be afraid of that wheel spin um, when you're heading down the straights. So just try and get through the gears as sort of as quickly as you can and uh, yeah, that, that will definitely help with acceleration. So you're going to be quite frustrated in, in that regard um, because you're going to be lacking that acceleration and someone may have just gotten it a little bit better than you and they're pulling away but don't worry, you've got this super long straight to go. 
Um, braking just at the 150 board, maybe a little bit after, gearing down late, third gear for this right-hander, stay close to the, to the wall as, as early as you can, I mean as soon as you can. There's going to be understeer in the middle, you want to get on the power as early as you can there, and then hug the wall there again, and um, sort of just riding the crest down the hill, and you can go all the way towards the wall on the exit. Now the super fast section here, um, I wouldn't say that this part is easy flat, because uh, you can go slightly offline, but you want to hug the left hand as much as you can to open up this right hand and set it up. You can go to the middle of the track here, breaking around 80, 75 meters. Very important to get the direction change right through there. If you if you mess up the left hander, you're going to crash into the right hander and you're going to lose all your lap time. Opening up this right hander here, um, you want to try and sort of get the rear to rotate around before you turn in. And the same situation here, you don't want to be exiting the corner turn with too much steering angle because you're going to have a tendency to understeer wide. Yeah, this took me quite a while to get right, breaking around 80 meters and then getting as close to the right hand wall as you can. There's sort of like a small banking there um, where the white lines are, um, which helps you turn around the corner. And then through this left hand, I always was getting exit oversteer. I think there's a slight crest there where you want to get on the power and um, it was just costing me a little bit of uh, lap time because I kept bumping the wall. Breaking here at 150 meters, some people are able to break later, not me. Gearing down as slowly as possible, short shifted to second this time um, to try and minimize wheel spin. I mean, obviously you don't want to be doing donuts around this place, but a little bit of wheel spin is okay. Please hear me out there. Not, not tons of wheel spin, but just a little bit of wheel spin. Um, if you're not comfortable with it, don't be shy to use some traction control. Be aware that you, with TC1, you're probably still going to be getting quite a bit of wheel spin and you're going to miss out on acceleration. So if you're really struggling, and you're not in the top tier um, races and you, you do want to rely on some TC, then use a higher TC value. Don't use one, use something like three, but not five, never use five. Maximum value three, just to help you with that initial acceleration. My brake balance in this car was more to the rear, which is what you do in real life. Um, that's because in real life, heavy cars in the rain will understeer. So we move the brake balance to the rear to try and get some rotation under braking. And, you know, if you want, if you find that you can't minimize that understeer, then you can gear down earlier than what I'm recommending. But just be aware that you have to time it right so that you don't completely miss the corner because you're just effectively uh, sliding uh, past the ideal turning point. Again, through this left-hander, nice and flat. Middle of the track, and then turn it right through here. You want to stay to the right-hand side. This was a small mistake. Now I'm going to have to brake and completely mess up this section here. Big oversteer somehow keep it together um, in third gear you want to go ideally through there in fourth stay in fourth the whole way here turn in early apex maximize the exit come back for the left hander and then stay in fourth gear getting on the power uh, patiently smoothly getting close to the wall because you're pushing hard as you can breaking around okay that's not 80 that's about 75 meters using that small banking on the right hander and then just be careful here of the uh, snap over steer. Now, I think that the place where you're gonna lose the most time is through this right hand hairpin. Um, I couldn't get it quite right. I tried deep, I tried very narrow. The point is more, you gotta break in a straight line. Then at the last minute, you can, you're gonna turn in, gear down to first to get the rotation at the apex, and then just try and find the best way to accelerate out of here without I'm losing too much time on acceleration. It's really not easy to get right. Um, but if you do nail it, you're going to find a lot of lap time. So there you go. That's pretty much my track guide for this week. Uh, Group 3 Daily Race C in the wet around Tokyo. I like that they've added another wet track to the game. However, I do wish that was a little bit more accurate in terms of the realism on white lines and things like that. I'm pretty sure, like in real life, uh, wet highways, if they were racetracks, they'd be so slippery because of the oil that cars and trucks are leaving uh, on the tracks, I mean on the asphalt. So, yeah, there's my opinion, but I still really would enjoy doing this race. Although, just be very careful of your DR, so don't go into the race without getting a good qualifying position. Alright, hope you found that useful, and i um, looking forward to posting a new onboard story later this week. If you want to grab some merch from me that's shop.daveapparel.net caps hoodies t-shirts uh, if you want to get some coaching you can also do that and thank you very much to my patrons uh, for supporting my channel it's hugely appreciated and i'm really 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 stoked that everyone here finds these track guides useful until the next one 
Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you around the next lap. Cheers.